Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob, and welcome back to episode number 41 of the New Orleans Pelicans My League series here on NBA 2K20. Now, I know you guys were looking at the title and are like, what? The end? We're only in mid-December. How can this be the end? But yes, this will be the end of the Pelicans series. This will be the series finale as we're going to sim through the season and find out what happens to the Pelicans. Do they make the playoffs? Take a look at their stats, stuff like that. And the reasoning behind that is because 2K21 comes out September 4th, which is in a couple of weeks. And I know for a fact I cannot get through this whole seer, this whole season in two weeks and do everything that I want to do with the season. So we're just going to call it here, just run through it, do a little bit of a sim and stuff like that. I know it sucks the season's ending, but if you're excited for the 2K21 series, because I definitely am, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below. All you got to do is follow those instructions on the screen and you'll be good to go. But back into my reasoning, yep, 2K21's coming out, and you know I want to make that a solid series. I want to get that one from the get-go. Obviously, I joined YouTube in about November of last year, so this series didn't start till November, so I was already a couple months behind on 2K20. I want to make sure that's not the fact for 2K21. I want to have a series right out the gate, and I have plans on what I want to do for the series because I know that the NBA playoffs are still going on, and the game's going to be released with the playoffs, so I know that's kind of weird. But if 2K21 lets me, I think I know what I'm going to do. I think I know what my series is going to be and stuff like that. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to show you guys that. There will be a team reveal next week so you guys can see who I'll be using for that series. But today we're just going to sim through the season. I'm going to sim off camera and I'm, we're going to go into the playoffs, see what they do in the playoffs and stuff like that because this is going to take me a while to get through the season every single game. So. I will meet you guys at the end of the season, and we'll see what happens to the Pelicans. And we are back now that we're at the end of the season. After what took me about two hours, we've gotten to the end. We sit at 43 and 39, which is good enough to make the playoffs. We are the eighth seed in the West, just making the playoffs. Bad news, we got to go against the one Rockets. Other matchups include the four Grizzlies and the five Timberwolves, the three Warriors and the six Clippers, two Lakers, seven Trailblazers, and in the East, 76ers, Charlotte Hornets, Bucks, Bulls, Pistons, Magic, and Nets, Celtics. Looking at the playoff bracket on first glance, really no surprises. The only surprise being the Charlotte Hornets made the playoffs with the eighth seed, but you might see why they made it in a second. But we have officially made the playoffs, so we'll have to see how far the Pelicans go. Let's take a look at the standings to see how much they made the playoffs by. So, Rockets were the best team in the league, the 78% on the win. And we were the 8th seed, and we beat the Mavericks by one game. So, we had a tough stretch to end the season, but we hung on. Couldn't, they we're actually holding off the Nuggets for most of it, but they lost 6 straight as well. So. We held on to the 8th seed over the Mavericks and the Nuggets. And take a look at, so let's go look at the awards now that the season's over. Let's take a look at some of the awards on the season. Let's see, season awards, right? No, that's not what I want, I want season awards. Where is the yearly awards? Uh, why can't I find the yearly awards? That is that. Huh. I don't know why I can't find it, but let's not waste any more time. We'll just go straight into. Well, I'll just talk about who won. So, MVP was Anthony Davis. He made MVP on the season. And then Rookie of the Year did go to Cole Anthony. He did win Rookie of the Year. He passed James Wiseman late, who did get hurt, unfortunately. That's why he didn't win MV, or Rookie of the Year, but we'll take it. And then Sixth Man of the Year was Dennis Schroeder of the Thunder. And that's basically all the awards we got. First team was the Harden and Westbrook, followed by Davis. LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. So that's all I have for yearly awards. Take a look at stats now. See if, take a look at how our team did. So let's go to season stats. Let's 
let's go to let's go to league leaders first. We'll start with league leaders. So Anthony Davis did lead the way, 33 points per game. That's why he won MVP award. 11 or 17 rebounds, just an absolute unit. The former Pelican just continues to destroy the league. Followed by James Harden with 32. LeBron had 32, basically. Damian Lillard had 31. Kyrie 30 and a half. Jokic, who was leading most of the season for MVP, got hurt as well. He had 30 points, and that's all of the 30-point guys. A rebounds per game was Davis and Gobert with 17 apiece, followed by Jokic. Assists, Chris Paul's the only one who averaged double-digit assists of the Grizzlies, so that trade they made in the draft actually paid off as they made the playoffs with a four seed. Steals per game, Leonard, Paul, and Anthony Edwards, the rookie out of Georgia, 2.6. And blocks Anthony Davis with 3.4. He also won Defensive Player of the Year. So Anthony Davis was an absolute unit. But let's go into our stats. Let's see how our players did. Starting off with Zion at the top, 21.9 points per game, 9.9 .9 rebounds, basically a double double. Nobody on our team made the All Star game. That was also kind of whack. Zion did not make the All Star team. But we're going to digress there. Let's take a look at his stats compared to last year. So he improved points per game wise and rebounds per game wise. Shooting percentage went down, but I mean, when you're shooting 57% your first year, it's going to go down. Zion, absolute tank of a player. Then Cole Anthony, 19.1 points per game, the rookie of the year. I mean, we are so, we got so lucky to have Cole Anthony on our team. We weren't even supposed to be a top four pick. Got lucky with the lottery, landed Cole Anthony. I don't even know where we'd be if Cole Anthony was on the team. I don't even think we would have made playoffs. Our point guard position would have looked entirely different if we didn't land Cole Anthony. So obviously it was a lot of fun to have Cole Anthony. He shot 49%, 42.5 from three. I mean, he is going to be a dominant player for this team for years. And I was so, so, we were so lucky we have Cole Anthony on this team. Next up, Drew Holiday, 15 points per game. Obviously went down, but he did hit 30. So that's reasonable. But he did shoot 50%. His shooting numbers were up. He just didn't have to carry as much of a load with Cole Anthony and Zion having a full season. Still a great player. He has a free agent. He has a player option after this year. I think he would have declined, but Drew Holiday, I'm glad we held on to him for both years. I'm glad he was a very solid player to just have. A core solid guy you know you can rely on at the beginning of the series. And I love playing with Drew Holiday. He was so awesome on the defensive glass as well. Or defensive side of the ball. Next up, Brandon Ingram, 13.9 points per game. Signed the big extension this past offseason. You look at his contract again, basically averaging 22, 24 million a year. And for those kind of numbers, a little depressing that he only averaged 13.9 points per game. He did shoot the rock really well. He shot it way better than he did last year, but I would have liked to see him been more aggressive. He just didn't really take as much shots per game as somebody like a Porter Jr. or something, or you know, whoever our center was. I would like to see Ingram get more involved in the offense. He also improved as a defensive player. He averaged 4.8 rebounds per game. Oh, yeah, 0.2 more steals. So I was happy with Brandon Ingram. I just wish he would have done a little bit more. Then Michael Porter Jr., 13 points per game, which looks pretty solid. But, you know, his shooting numbers, I guess they did get better as the season gone off. So 42.5%, 34 from three. He just shoots a lot. He's a very ball dominant player in the series. I'm not sure, you know, why, but it was a very interesting experience. I thought we were getting a absolute steal when we traded for him from Denver last year, and he never really fit well with the system. He was, you know, sometimes he was starting, sometimes he wasn't starting. Just didn't really know what to do with Porter Jr. And you know, he kind of played backup for most of the year. So glad to see his numbers did get better as the season going because he was just downright terrible in the middle part. But Porter Jr., interesting story. Then Vernon Carey Jr., the rookie out of Duke, 11.7 points per game. We did a draft day trade. He was originally drafted by the Hawks, but we got a we traded for him and great pick. 11.7 um, points per game. He was an absolute animal. I mean, number 11 pick, I didn't really expect that. He basically took over the starting center spot. I mean, you can't deny these numbers. 57 field goal percentage. I don't know if he attempted a three. Let's see if he actually attempted a three. Does it show you right here? He attempted one three all season, did not make it. I'm pretty sure I attempted that three. But So Vernon Carey Jr., absolute great player. He's you know the five of the future. So in the draft, we got both our one of the future in Cole Anthony and our five of the future in Vernon Carey Jr. The two spots I think we desperately needed, we got in one draft. So I think we got set up very nicely for the future. 
Then J.J. Redick, 10.7 points per game. Obviously, the old vet, 36 years old. His numbers did go down 37% from three. And he had a lot of days off. He needed a lot of days where he was just tired. I had to you know, sit him out for a day. How many games did he end up playing? He ended up playing 66 games, so three less than last year. Did not get hurt, so I just had to be very careful with J.J. Redick so he's healthy for this playoff run. We'll see if he can light it up for a three-pointer. So one of the few veterans on this team. So we didn't end up trading. We actually made no trades throughout the season. I thought about it, but we did not trade him. Jeff Teague, the guy we signed to be the backup point guard this year, 8.1 points per game. His numbers were solid, and he just didn't get as much minutes as he did in Minnesota. Very good mentor. He's been basically mentoring Cole Anthony. He's got very solid badges, which is the reason why I signed him. He has gold playmaking badges, diamond, needle, threader, and he's got, you know. So that's why I signed him to be a mentor for Cole Anthony. So if Cole Anthony can get these badges, he'll be an even more well-rounded point guard. So that's why we signed Jeff Teague, and I was very happy with that his play this year. Then Mitchell Robinson, six points per game, 8.6 boards. He's a glass cleaning lockdown. We traded Lonzo to the Knicks for Mitchell Robinson in the offseason. I didn't really ask him to do a lot on the offensive glass because he had so many, you know, role players around him, but or not offensive glass and the offensive, you know, shooting. As long as he cleaned the glass, I would have been okay. And he basically did that. So I really have nothing negative to say about Mitchell Robinson. He just lost his starting spot because Bernie Carey played so well. But He's a solid player on the team. And then Jackson Hayes, here we go, start getting to more just like role players. 3.9 points per game. I don't know why he sucks so bad at shooting. 26%, he's like seven feet tall. He's like taller than the basket, but he sucks at shooting. He's been kind of a bust, I'm not gonna lie. This is being the eighth pick last year out of Texas. So I'm sorry, that's all I really got to say about Jackson Hayes. Josh Hart also just got bit minutes when somebody like a Redick or a Holiday needed a day off every once in a while. He shot better. Just really nowhere on the team for him. I think he is a free agent this year, so he probably won't be back with the team next year. Didn't end up trading him. Maybe should have traded him. Maybe get some, you know, capital for him. But he stayed on the team. Same with Nikhil Alexander-Walker. 3.4 points per game. A little younger than Hart. Also has team control, so he'll be on the team. And then Javias Ramsey, second-round pick who lit it up in the summer league out of Texas Tech. 3.3 for him, two points for Aaron Henry, a second round pick from Michigan State. And then Reggie Perry, I think played in one game for us out of Mississippi State. How many games did he play? He played, he played 10 games. He just didn't score a basket. So <laughs> interesting, he took two shots all 10 minutes and didn't make a single one. So Reggie Perry, just another role player. And then we had Azubuki in the summer or in the G League undrafted out of Kansas. So that's our stats. Let's see who lid in rebounds real quick. Zion Williamson with 9.9 .9. assists was Cole Anthony. Steals per game, Cole Anthony. Blocks per game, Vernon Carey. So that was our team stats. So let's go ahead and look at our, our player stats. Let's go ahead and look at our team stats now. So points per game wise, Rockets were the best team in the league. In points per game, we were 14th, so a lot better than last year. Last year, we were in the bottom half of the league, maybe even bottom five, so we got a lot better scoring the Rock. Points allowed, best team in that category was the 76ers. This is a high average league. We were ninth, so solid overall, still a solid defensive team. Field goal percentage wise, we were eighth. Three points, we were a little bit lower, 17th. And then free throw, we're not a very good free throw shooting team. 29th, so just need to work on our free throws, it looks like. So that's all with the season recap. Let's go ahead and look and see what the Pelicans do in the postseason. So I'm just going to simulate it game by game, see what happens. And then we'll get, so I'll basically simulate by round whenever we get eliminated. And then when we make the finals, I will just simulate the game by game. So let's simulate the first game. I think I got to, I got to jump in to play game. And then I got back out every single time. So first game is a win for the Rockets. Let's take a look at the box score. 127-123. Could not come back. James Harden, 34 points. We were led by Porter Jr., 32 points. So hanging on was the Pelicans. Or was the Rockets, excuse me. Go into game two now, and Houston wins game two as well. So we fall 2-0 down in the series, 109-105. Eric Gordon actually led the way for the Rockets in this one. 
followed by Harden's 19, that would double from Westbrook as well. All the Pelicans, Brandon Ingram led away for us 20 points on 8 of 17 shooting. Cole Anthony only had 14 and Zion only had 10. Going into Game 3 though, in New Orleans, we win this one 137-129, to 129, so trying to battle back. Zion had 30 points, 13 rebounds, Porter Jr. had 26 of his own. All the Rockets led this time by James Harden's 26, Eric Gordon put up 20 once more. So that takes us to Game 4 as we simulate, and we actually win Game 4 as well, so so far the home team winning the series. It's 2-2 two to two now as we go back to Houston. Porter Jr. 23 for us on 9 of 16 shooting. Zion had 21 points and 14 rebounds. While for the Rockets, it was... Da -da 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 -da. James Harden, 41 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, 1 away from a triple-double in each of those categories. But we go back to Houston, and in game number 5, the Pelicans win game number 5. So upset alert potentially. As we take a look, Rockets 34 points on 10 rebounds for Westbrook. And we actually won this one in overtime. 123-119, pick up a steal in Houston. Can we take this momentum back to New Orleans? That would be great. As we were led by Zion's 26 points in 40 minutes. Just not the best efficiency shooting, but led the way for us. Ingram had 21 points of his own. So we are on game elimination. See in the East, the Hornets actually beat the 76ers in five games. So upset in the East for sure. We're trying to do the same in the West. We lose game six, however, 135 to 120 to the Rockets. JJ Redick put up 34 for us, 60% from three point. Just wasn't enough to beat the Rockets on slot. That had 40 from Harden and 30 from Westbrook. And Clint Capella had 24 as well. So we go into the deciding game seven. And we pull out the win in game seven in Houston, baby. Four to three. We move on to the semifinals. As we take a look at the box score 118 to 104. 42 point fourth quarter. James Harden's 24 was not enough for the Rockets. And we were led by Drew Holiday, the vet, leading us throughout the way. 37 points on 15 to 28 shooting. And we go to the semifinals to face the four seed Memphis Grizzlies. As the Hornets upset the 76ers, a couple of upsets. Sevens beating two, so the Lakers will not repeat as champs. They drop in six to the Portland Trailblazers. Dame time. Pretty happy about that one. So let's take a look at the Grizzlies roster before we get in. We've kind of grown accustomed to them. Obviously, they had the big trade, Steven Adams and Chris Paul in the draft. And it looked like it's playing dividends as John Morant's had a very solid season as the number two. And they're the four seed in the West. So no slouches are the Grizzlies. Game one, however, we win in Memphis. 110-108, slip out the win. John Morant had 25 points and 12 assists for the Grizzlies. Chris Paul with 22, while we were led by the 20 and 10 from Zion Williamson. Let's go to game two now. We drop game two though, 118 to 110. Memphis pick up the win. Jaron Jackson Jr. with 27, eight points. John Morant with 27, and we had 38 from Zion on 17 for 23 shooting. So he's putting up big numbers. It just wasn't enough. Game three, though, we win game three, take a 2-1 series lead in New Orleans, 137-122. to Cole Anthony finally starts to get going in the playoffs. He had 30 points of his own. All the Grizzlies were led by the 32 of Ja Morant, despite his 11 of 28 shooting. So, take a look at the scoreboard, though. I don't see no Chris Paul on the Grizzlies box score. Let's see if anything happened to Chris Paul. Check the injury reports, and severe left ankle sprain, four to six weeks. Oh, man. That sucks if you're a Grizzlies fan. That actually might be season ender. Steven Adams is also hurt, so he will not be in the next matchup, I don't think. So Grizzlies, though, that is a bummer to say the least. And in game four, we take advantage. We win that one to go up 3-1. Zion Williamson, 35 points, 17 rebounds. We win by 12 as he shot 14 of 28. Cole Anthony at 23 with no Chris Paul in this one. All the Grizzlies, John Morant trying to do it all, 32 points. Steven Adams actually did play, wasn't efficient though, had 12 rebounds. But we go into game number five, and the Grizzlies do win game five, so not trying to go out easy as John Morant, and this time he got some help from Brandon Clark and Jonas Valanciunas. Held us to under 100. 
as we were led by Cole Anthony, even though he only had 17. So we go back into New Orleans. This would be a great time to end the series in at home in the Bayou. Let's see if we can do it. And we do. Game six goes the way of the Pelicans. We punch our spot in the conference finals. Final score 107-93. Zion had 33, 13 of 15 shooting. Only missed two shots all game. Drew Holiday 19 of his own. And we move on to the final four conference finals. Grizzlies, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s 21 and Morant's 20. Not enough. Now we just got to figure out who are we going to play in the conference finals. Golden State and Portland are locked up going into a game seven. And it's going to be Portland. So the eight and the seven seeds in the West make it to the conference finals. Way different than last year. Last year was just straight chalk, if you remember. In the East, it is Bucks, the four seed versus the seven seed Celtics. So let's take a look at the Trailblazers roster. Obviously, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Usage, Nurchich. They are your core with some solid rotational players in Joey Crowder, Nerlens Noel, Zach Collins. But this is the Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum show. We have to stop them too if we want to pitch our ticket to the finals. Actually, have the rookie Precious Achirua out of Memphis as well. So a good pickup in the first round by Portland. And in game one, we lose 103 101. Can't squeak out the come from behind victory. Damian Lillard dropped 43. You can tell he's ready to go. Trying to get to his first ever final. And Porter Jr. had 21 for us leading the way. Game two, we lose even more, 138 to 101. We give a 47 point fourth quarter, including 47 to Lillard. So Lillard just dropping bombs on us as we were led by Zion's 26 and 10. So not what you want to see. He didn't go to the free throw line at all. We only went to the free throw line twice. But game three in New Orleans, we do win this one, 118 to 93. So we've been here before, remember, in the first round. Cole Anthony's 25 points led the way for us by Lillard. Dropped 33 this time, and not in the 40s, and look what happened. They lost. So we just got to try to hold Lillard if we want to take this series. Game four goes the way of Portland, so they take a 3-1 lead. They win this one 131-113. to We go 75 second-half points as who led the way for the Trailblazers? Damn, 57 points? We have, like, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is what I'm talking about. We have to stop Damian Lillard. 57, that's absurd. Well, we're down 3-1, as the East is 2-2 two, two apiece. So we're actually going to make some adjustments here. You can see we're going to put Drew Holiday on Damian Lillard. Hopefully that can help as we have our stud on Lillard. Cole Anthony has to guard CJ McCollum, however. Oh, the New Orleans Pelicans have been eliminated. We dropped game five. So the Portland Trailblazers end our Cinderella run in the playoffs. They take game five, take the series 4-1. Trailblazers, they go to the play finals for the first time since 1992 when Clyde Drexler took them and they lost to Chicago and Michael Jordan. Let's take a look at the box score. 128 to 110. Portland Trailblazers in this one. Lillard only had 30, so we did hold him, but CJ McCollum had 25. Just a rough defensive outing from Cole Anthony. He is a rookie. He will get better, however. Zion Williamson, 22 points, and Anthony Yikes, 2 of 10 shooting. Only had 6 points, so a rough first playoff appearance for Cole Anthony. As now we got to see who do the Portland Trailblazers face in the finals. The Celtics are up 3-2 to two on Milwaukee, and that game is in Boston. So can they close it out and meet the Portland Trailblazers in the finals? Yes, they do. 4-2 to two win for the Celtics. So the two seven seeds meeting up in the NBA Finals. Portland Trailblazers, Boston Celtics. As let's take a look at the Celtics roster. And one thing you will notice on their roster, they actually did make a pretty big trade during the season. And it looks like it paid off. They traded Gordon Hayward to the Timberwolves for Robert Covington. So... Trade a little bit of firepower to get some defensive specialists on the edge, and it looks like it's paid off in spades as Boston is back to the finals for the first time in 13 seasons. And let's take a look, see who wins. Game one, Portland Trailblazers win this one, 127 to 119. So the first game was in Portland. And CJ McCollum led the way for the Trailblazers. Kimball Walker had 25 for the Celtics. 
So let's go Sim Game 2 now. It's tied 1-1 one one as Boston wins Game 2, 133-123. Wibbler had 33 once more. Nurkic had 26, but the Celtics were able to prevail thanks to the offense of Jason Tatum at 32. Kemba had 31 as well, so a quick 1-2 punch in Boston tying it up. And then in Game 3, we go to Boston, and they win 135-124. to 124. Kemba, 24 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. And it's now a 2-1 series lead in Game 4's in Boston. Willard, 39 points. He just needs some help, guys. So let's see what happens in Game number 5. And the Celtics win this one 117-112. So it's elimination time for the Trailblazers. Kemba Walker, 26 points, 7 assists. Shot way more efficient too. Lillard 26 points. Tried to get the team involved with 10 assists. Just wasn't enough. So now on the verge of elimination is the Trailblazers. Game 5. Here we go. And the Boston Celtics win it in 5. They are your NBA champions. Title Town gets another championship. And the Celtics win their first title since 2008. When the big three led them there. Kimba Walker is your finals MVP as a Hornets fan. I just love seeing that. Good for Kimba. That's what the Hornets get for letting him go. 25 points per game, and he gets it done for the Celtics. They look like they have something to build around, and that's going to do it. So here's your playoff bracket. Here's the box score, actually. 119 to 104. Lillard had 29 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. But the Celtics, Jason Tatum actually led the way with 20 points. Walker had 19 and the Celtics get it done, so that's way off what my prediction was. I had Rockets over 76ers, and they were the one seed, so I just missed out on that part. But that's going to do it for this series, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. I actually loved this series. This is my first, like I said earlier, my first flagship series on the channel. And I had a great time doing NBA 2K20. I want to do 2K21 when it comes out. This is why I ended it here, because I honestly don't know. If, I can't really think of any good YouTubers that I like personally that do. 2K Octagonal Gaming obviously does a great job, but with this Hornets franchise. But I want to do a phenomenal 2K21 series. We're gonna do all the stuff in this, and we're gonna make it bigger, badder, and better. So I'm super hyped about this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below as we get ready for 2K21. And also tomorrow, there's another new series coming to the channel. Madden 21 Detroit Lions Episode 1 drops tomorrow, right here at 3 p.m. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.